bring on one of the attendees at yesterday's event. She is a candidate for House District 1, State House District 1 in Colorado, and was uh, attacked and threatened at yesterday's pro-police rally, Colorado Law Enforcement Appreciation Day celebratory event, the sixth annual one. We will show some footage for those just joining us in a moment, but Samantha Koch joins us now here on the program. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks for having me on. So you're a little distant there. Sounds like uh, the mic's a little quiet. Um, from you a little bit of static a static going on there but i think we'll be able to hear if you if you could speak up uh loud as possible okay. that'll be great but welcome to the show it's good to have you so um i'm gonna have nathan matouche my producer show up uh, show a little bit of footage of what happened yesterday as we talk so they can see some of the tension if they're just joining us but uh, what happened well first of all why were you there and what did you what did you make of what happened yesterday and then we'll get to your story well, we were invited, you know, as a candidate running in Denver, we were invited to come and support our police. Um, we were meant to have a few minutes to speak to the crowd and to really show our appreciate appreciation for our law enforcement. Um, so I got there a little bit after some of the initial chaos, and I was I was very confused as to what was happening. When you say confused, what do you mean? Well, I mean, we were told to go to this stage area and I, w I didn't I had never been to this particular park so I didn't know what the stage area was the reason I didn't know what it was is because the stage area was literally covered it's shoulder to shoulder with Antifa protesters mm. oh when you got there the protesters had already shown up yes. in full force so the so-called protesters right right that's that's apparently what we're supposed to call them so from a distance then, since you came from the outside, I had not realized that. Uh, yeah. What was that experience like? What was, to, to walk us through sort of your sense. Yeah, when I got there, um, I mean, everything already seemed extremely tense and it was very chaotic already. Um, you know, it, there were, at that point, the people that were there to support the police were on the sidelines, kind of up on the, uh, on the steps and the benches. And I didn't understand why, but all of the protesters were in the middle, kind of congregating and coming together. The police were coming down from the stairs um, to kind of separate the people that were there for the rally, um, separate us from the protesters and trying to keep things, hopefully, from getting out of hand. Um, so that was kind of the uh, the environment I walked into. Samantha, when you were there and you you ended up managing to make your way down, I assume to the to the main area, and then what happened? What was going on? Because as I understand it, you were directly threatened. Yes, yes. Well, I I was kind of towards the top of the stairs. I saw a couple people that I knew, so I made my way down to them, um, and then I. I kind of got into it with a couple of protesters trying to engage them in their cause versus our cause, which, you know, I understand is, is not generally going to, uh, to be, to have a lot of point to it. But, um, at that point I turned around and realized that I was in the midst of all the protesters. So I don't know if all the rally goers had, you know, just decided to leave or if they, you know, were advised to leave by the officers, but I was literally in the thick of the protest. So I was trying to get out of there. Um, so as I, you know, made my way back up the stairs and I was going kind of around the wall, this group was following me and screaming at me. And this one lady, you know, decided that she wanted to really engage with me. Um, she kept slapping my phone and trying to hit it out of my hand. Um, she was getting in my face and yelling obscenities at me. We were kind of in this this thick of trees and she kept grabbing the branches and trying to slap them into my face. Um, and this one guy then stepped in and he was a big guy and um, he yelled at me to stop touching her. And I said, I'm, I'm not touching her. <laughs> like I'm not the one coming at her. And he got in my face and said, I will literally slit your throat. Like I want to slit your throat right now. I will slit your throat. He said it about three or four times. Wow. Um, and at that point, two of our good guys stepped in between myself and these other people um, to kind of keep things from escalating, which I appreciated. Um, but even from there, this lady continued to come at me and yell at me, and, and she was really trying to engage, you know, what I felt was a physical um, encounter, confrontation, and 
um, I was not about to get that started. I'm not surprised based on the way in which they made their entrance. We've showed this before, and I'll briefly show it again in cut one. This is how things started from the stage vantage point when they first came out and interrupted as we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance before you arrived, or maybe at about that time, Samantha. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So you get a sense there for how things were in that early part. Immediately they came in making noise and intervening in very, shall we say, vigorous ways, to put it mildly, Samantha. And when we look at what happened there, it doesn't seem surprising to me at all that there was so much vitriol being leveled right away at people who were there just gathering together peacefully. We were the peaceful ones exercising our right. First Amendment rights. Right, absolutely, which is something I am fully in support of. I am fully in support of our First Amendment right to free speech as it peaceably assemble. This was not a peaceful assembly, at least on the protesters' part. You know, I, I did get there late, but I did see some of the footage of the things that happened before I got there. And this, they had no intent uh, to keep things peaceful. They came with the intent to incite violence and to, to start these physical altercations. I understand that um, you know, one of the other guests that I believe you're, you talked to before or after was beaten. Uh, Michelle Malkin um, had a video of somebody with a collapsible baton. Um, these were not people that were there to peaceably assemble. And this is the kind of thing that we need to be aware of um, and to, you know, make a distinction between peaceful protests, which we allow, and, you know, violent protests, which is what they came to incite. Yeah, I think that's that's very well put and, and an important point, Samantha Koch, our guest here on Jimmy at the Crossroads, a candidate for state house here in Colorado and in the city of Denver. Now, it, it appears that the police had their hands very much tied in terms of being able to try and address this situation. Uh, what do you make of, of that and also how brazen these thugs were and when they decided to just interrupt this event to completely disrupt it and to turn violent both in words through threats like you experienced and also through actual actions. Right. I, I did hear that the uh, police officers were advised to stand down and to not engage. Um, you know, I have mixed feelings about that, but it does say a lot about the leadership that we have in Denver um, and who they're protecting. They are standing up more for these violent thugs and these people that are um, leading to so much unrest and violence against, um, you know, peaceful citizens. And, and this is the kind of thing, you know, they appear to be standing up more for people that want to cause this kind of anarchy versus the people that want to stand up for, especially for those that keep our community safe. Um, so it says a lot about the, the kind of current leadership that we have now and how desperately we need to change it. And in terms of support for the police, I mean, that's why we were gathered together. And this is the sixth annual event that took place in Civic Center Park uh, for the police to show support for law enforcement. Not to say that we don't need reforms, that things don't need to change, that there isn't uh, a situation that needs to be addressed all across the country. But I'm just struck. I still, I keep making this point, but I'm just struck by how brazen they were, how confident they were right. to actually do something like this and allow it to get so violent so quickly. These, these, th oh, not just allow it, but to perpetrate this kind of violence so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think we've seen, you know, some of the same disrespect for our, um, you know, peaceful citizens of Colorado when our, our governor is calling names. Um, calling good people names that they don't listen to him. So it kind of, you know, leads to this um, environment where people feel um, empowered to show up at these events and know that, you know, the leadership of Colorado and the police officers are, are, are not going to do anything about it because they've been instructed not to. Um, so they've really been given a lot of power and a lot of confidence based on the tone of our, um, our elected officials right now. So, you know, they know very well that you know if, if anybody's going to be um not punished but if anybody's going to be spoken against it's going to be the ones that were there to protest or to rally peacefully 
versus them who, who we all know are not there to be people. Once again, Samantha Koch joining us here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. Uh, finally, why did you show up yesterday? What was it about this support for law enforcement that got you saying, you know, I want to join in, especially since I am someone running in Denver? Well, you know, we've seen across the country um, this this effort to abolish or to defund the police. And we saw this recent Senate bill come through. Um, and I've spoken to several officers that are saying, you know, just because of the restrictions of this bill, that there are officers that are, are leaving the state, that they, you know, they're not going to put themselves in a position to um, put their families, um, you know, to that lead to financial ruin, put their families in danger. Um, so we really are at a position where we're seeing our police officers and our department diminished. And I understand, you know, we knew that this protest was going to happen. We knew these people were going to be there. Um, and, and we were told, you know, I've heard that we, that, that we were advised to some level not to be there. But at what point do we say um, enough is enough? At what point do we, you know, we stop standing down and staying away and letting these mobs determine um, how we, who we support and what we stand for? Mm -hmm. uh, so at that point, you know, I knew that it, it could be a potentially dangerous situation, uh, but I wanted to be there to remind our officers that these mobs do not speak for the majority, um, that the majority of good, reasonable people still love them and appreciate them. And yes, we can always work for improvement. That's something that I'm open to and I understand um, needs to happen in some ways. Um, but the good people of our state need to be represented. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my sense is that they've had this territory for two plus months in the yeah. heart of Denver to the point where the, the capital, you can't go to the capital. Certainly, if you want to yeah. have any assurance of safety, I don't have any images of no. it, but there, there's a Polisville tent city right, si right outside the state capitol. It is vandalized and not cleaned up at all. Uh, you have statues that had been torn down. The, li the list goes on. And this is the one time when you actually had a demonstration that was different and something, by the way, that was annual this wasn't just set up hey there's this is going on we're gonna we're gonna do some sort of a response to provoke something this was an annual event and i agree with you that when you start giving that ground and allowing them to dictate the conversation it makes things even worse and we're seeing that play out that's why they're so brazen exactly you know they know and you know the last thing we just don't want to keep sending the message that if they say they're going to protest an event or they're going to show up and harass people that we back off and cancel our rallies and our support and, you know, standing up for the other side. Um, so it gets to the point where you have to say, you know what, I've got to do something. I can't just keep letting them tell me to stay in my home and be afraid. I think that's well put. Samantha Koch joining us again, a candidate for state house in Denver, Colorado, and an attendee who was literally threatened. And I'm so glad that you had others there around you to provide some sense of safety and to stop any assa potential assailants. I mean, who knows if this, this person that was threatening to slit your throat might have actually gotten viciously violent. So I'm very glad that you are okay and uh, appreciate you coming on to tell your story today, Samantha. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching this clip of Jimmy at the Crossroads. Don't miss more engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel. You do not want to miss our live show. Thanks for your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no one No sense Yeah! Awesome. <laughs>